guys, this bot's really, really good at taking off, and generally, in taking off wheels or extenders, it's uh, doing the significant chassis over. damage that he has a little bit of an issue doing. So I was able to win that fight. Did the game crash again? Hello everyone, BattleBoss Explained here, and welcome to another episode of You Guys Can't See <laughs> the Screen here, because once again, uh, the title is obscured because the game is glitched. Uh, game glitches have basically become a part of this series now. So guys, welcome back to Robot Arena 2, Robot 2 Arena, whatever you want to call it. And guys, I, I don't know this yet, but I have a strange feeling at some point in this episode, though, the game's gonna crash, and so you guys probably just saw uh, some sort of game crash happen. I don't even know if there is a crash in this episode or not, but more than likely there is, because there's a crash every single episode. Guys, we're going to be looking at some more uh, robots I made in Robot Arena 2 today. So yeah, this is, and guys, this is going to be a very interesting episode. As you can see by the title and thumbnail, this episode gets interesting. So guys, if you enjoy these videos, please leave a like. Also consider subscribing. We're going to get right into this. So, I made a new team called Exterminator Robotics, and this team basically consists of some traditional designs, but also some not-so-traditional designs. Uh, so we have black and blue here, it has a hammer and a flipper on it. We, I made Drumblebee, you know, my custom bot Drumblebee, I made him here. I also built this full-body spinner called Cyclone. The bot that probably caused most of you guys to click on this video, this, uh, this actual <laughs> race car. <laughs> yeah, guys, I actually made essentially a go-kart in Robot Arena 2. I think this thing could do a little something, but to be honest, uh, I don't really know. That's a whole lot of uh, exposed extenders on this poor thing. But we'll fight with him later on in the episode, though. Then we have the, uh, one of you guys actually commented in one in, on the last video, on the last Robot Arena 2 video, and asked me to, uh, because you guys remember, on the last video, I made a bot called Simple Sawbot. Two of them. Simple Sawbot and then Simple Vertical Sawbot. And one of you guys said, maybe you should try making a Simple Hammer Sawbot. Here you go, buddy. <laughs> Here's your Simple Hammer Sawbot. And because of the way that the weight works in this game, the saw really doesn't work very well, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah, this bot's going to be a nightmare once I eventually get to it. And I also made Fake Tombstone in Robot Arena 2. Again, guys, this is stock Robot Arena 2. This is without any mods. This is without component freedom. Essentially, without all the different things that are required in order to make uh, Robot Arena 2 better, for the most part. In fact, I'm going to do one quick thing while I'm thinking about it. I'm going to go and add one little balance caster here, because... Uh, as you guys know, Robot Arena 2 kind of has a problem when it comes to lower bots with lower blades, and they don't really hit as well, and uh, Fake Tombstone here had the same problem, so while that does jack him up a little bit and he doesn't look quite as good, I'm still going to keep it that way, and while I'm at it, I'm actually going to change his wheels out, because I don't really like the way that those uh, slipper bottom wheels look, <laughs> look at this granny guard. I don't know why they decided to call it that, but anyway, we're going to add some more respectable wheels onto fake tombstone here there we go that really makes it out of proportion but you know what guys we're gonna leave it like that there we go i know it's not as realistic as it was before but i mean come on it actually kind of looks is it just me or does it kind of look like mickey mouse now i don't know so guys, we're going to begin, as we do always, with a tournament for each of our bots here. And we're going to start out with Black and Blue. Black and Blue, like I said, it is a hammer that also has a flipper on it. I remember seeing lots of these types of bots, especially in Robot Wars, guys. Those of you who are Robot Wars fans know that there was a hammer slash flipper combo. Seemingly almost every Robot Wars episode. I know it wasn't every episode, but... 
Uh, in Robot Wars, though, flippers and uh, hammers are, you know, axes, you guys also call them axes, are easily as common as vertical spinners are in BattleBots, you guys know that. So, here we have a somewhat tradi traditional axe and flipper combo, and uh, it's painted black and blue. Not much else to say about this, other than the flipper can actually do some damage because I have axe heads on it. I'm kind of taking a page out of a backslash's playbook here. I also added some iron spikes onto the front of the wedge in order to uh, make it be able to cause a little bit of damage there, and I also have these extenders here which do absorb a little bit of damage from opponents. Not much at all, but this is one of the bots that's going to rely more on driving, I think. So we're going to go into a tournament, and let's see what's a good one for this one. Let's try this one. I don't know if this is a good choice. Okay, it was a pretty good choice. Welcome to the Electric Arena. Prepare to be zapped. Use the high voltage equipment and switch in this arena to give your opponent the shock they so deserve. The fans love these robots. Really, announcer? That's all you've got to say? <laughs> that the fans love these robots? Seriously, you can't come up with anything more creative. My goodness, you really don't deserve that raise, do you? Okay, so now we're up against Backyard Ripper, and I'm going to see if I can take off the spinner early on, because that's going to help us a lot. Just use the axe here. There we go. Now he no longer has his spinner, and he's a lot more vulnerable to our axe flipper combo. You know, for those of you who are Robot Wars fans, you know that uh, Shunt, the house robot, or at least one of the house robots, he, you know, he had the scoop and axe configuration, and it was a pretty interesting configuration. I feel if Shunt was a... Uh, Standard Robot Wars bot, he could have done decently, especially with how uh, big the scoop was, especially during the earlier days of Robot Wars and how durable it could be. But one thing I noticed though, Shunt would always fire the axe first and then flip. I think it's better to flip first and then uh, fire the axe, because you get to pop them up first and then get them into the path of the axe or fire both at once. I personally think that's a little bit more effective, but you know, that's just me. So we're just <laughs> beating the living heck out of uh, Backyard Ripper. I'm pretty sure he's done. He's just going to barbecue over there for a little while and get himself a little shock. So, Also, one thing, guys, I think I mentioned before. In the Electric Arena, you're supposed to be able to push this button and cause more damage. I'm pretty sure it does absolutely nothing. In fact, as you guys saw when I bumped into the red button here, that actually damaged me. That was 11 points. That was damage to my bot, actually. So, yeah, I'm just gonna stay away from those red buttons because there's no reason for me to deal with them. The and over. just to let Backyard Ripper get counted out and hit him one last time for good measure. Okay, that was a pretty sweet first fight, and oh my goodness, the extender for my axe almost got broken off, so let's fix that pronto because we need our axe. Let's see, our next opponent I think is Sentinel. Yep, it's Sentinel. Okay, Sentinel, come here, you big fat embarrassment. I'm not making fun of fat people, guys. You know that I'm just saying Sentinel is just a big embarrassment. Because he really is an embarrassment. Look at him. Oh my goodness. Oh my, I just... That was embarrassing. Thankfully, I can still kind of drive upside down, so it's not the biggest deal in the world. Oh my goodness. It will be humiliating if I somehow lose to Sentinel, and I won. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I'm just gonna sit here and just uh, axe him a little bit, cause a little bit more damage, see if I can get a knockout. Don't want this fight to be necessarily boring. Um, you guys remember in the last video, I <laughs> I really bashed Sentinel, and actually I kind of had a tough fight with him, really, with a uh, very angry Sentinel, which was my version of it. And again, guys, Sentinel isn't the worst bot in the world. It's kind of a copycat of a Vlad the Impaler from the original uh, Comedy Central days of BattleBots. Oh, we got a wheel off. I guarantee you that's something that Axe will never do in uh, robot combat, at least modern times. That's probably not going to happen. Neither are electricity weapons going to happen because, well, that's kind of just a little bit maybe illegal <laughs> by the rules. Let's just hit him a couple more times. Okay, Sentinel's gonna get counted out. We're just gonna leave him alone, let him get counted out. And Black and Blue is going to have its second win of 
ever, really, <laughs> besides just uh, maybe one test match that I had with him. Okay, Black and Blue, you're doing pretty well so far. And uh, yeah, not much damage at all now that we were able to repair him, so let's go into what looks like the semi-finals. And we are going up against, I think it's Razor. No, it's iPoker, I'm sorry. Okay, iPoker. Titan had such a huge problem with you in the first episode of this series, but now you have no chance whatsoever against bots that are not vertical spinners. Something like iPoker is actually really, really good against vertical spinners because of how just awkward shape the bot is, especially with those two prongs at the front, they can kind of hold a vertical spinner at bay. Nothing they can do against the Nax though, so I can just hit him over top. I did the same thing with uh, what was an Inferno Maximus in uh, one of my uh, previous episodes. I was able to beat iPoker with that end. Oh no 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 no! I almost pinned him against the wall! No! Okay, iPoker, get on the electric grid thing. Just get on that and fry. Okay, let's just prop him up and get another hit in with the axe there. He is just getting roasted right now. And not metaphorically roasted, he's getting actually roasted. <laughs> he is... yeah, his goose is cooked, as they would say. So he's getting a few more hits. Surely he's not going to last too much longer at this point. I mean, seriously, how much health does he have left? He is blinking. You guys probably can't see, but in the top right corner I can see he's blinking, and we have just about knocked him out. We just need a few more hits with this axe here. Come on, eye poker, come on, just die already. <laughs> he's on fire. <laughs> he's, 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 it's like Black Dragon vs. Ribot, if you guys haven't watched uh, the last BattleBots episode. Spoilers for all of you, but uh, Black Dragon vs. Ribot. Somebody was on fire for about two minutes of that fight, and are you serious? I just lost my axe by hitting eye poker, and I don't even think that I was touching the weapon. That is some nonsense of the highest order, but I knocked him out anyway. I'm actually at a big disadvantage now. Uh, hopefully my axe will come back when I put that extender on. I know the game sometimes glitches and uh, doesn't actually put it back on, which is something I am definitely concerned about. I'm just going to repair chassis. I'm going to repair that stuff. Okay. We're in the final now, and I think we are up against... Uh, it's either Raptor or a Grog. Yeah, we're up against Grog. Oh, I did get my axe back. That's good. I need to be careful here, because that extender that makes up my axe is uh, not the strongest in the world. So our best bet is to get him in there, and oh no, I did not want to get into an axe fight. Thankfully, I don't really have to, though. I only lost one little piece. See, guys, that's part of the reason why I made that little cage in the front of the box. These pieces here, as you can see, it absorbed one hit. And that was one hit that otherwise probably would have taken off my axe. So it's kind of my way of armoring up this the bot a little done. bit. Let's just get in another <laughs> little uh, few cheap shots on Grog after winning. And Black and Blue has won his first tournament. Well done to Black and Blue. This is actually a pretty decent bot, guys. Um, obviously pretty basic just with the axe and the flipper, but it works and it won a tournament. So congratulations to Black and Blue there. It's a pretty decent bot. Now let's go over to our next bot, Drumblebee. Now, you guys know if you watch my LEGO series, which a lot of you guys do, that I made this custom bot called Drumblebee. And I based it off of some uh, Antweight Beetleweight bots, specifically some Beetleweight robots that I had seen in the Beetleweight combat scene, where you basically just have a big fat drum here, two wheels way in the back, impractical as all get out, but it is invertible, and it's also a very simple design to build overall compared to something like, say, Minotaur, or a more complex drum design. So, as far as making something like uh, this type of design in Robot Arena 2, I had to do some weird stuff. So basically what I did, guys, is I attached a Snapper 2 burst motor to the uh, Z-Tech motor, then attached some spikes to that, some of these uh, Razor spikes. And the drum works pretty decently well, getting it at the right angle so that the uh, bot will still spin while inverted and stuff, and so that uh, it won't bounce on the ground was tricky, but I was able to use these pieces here to prop it up from the outside. So guys, this is a uh, this is a drum spinner in stock Robot Arena 2. I know that plenty of these have been made before, but generally though, 
drum spinners are not very easy to make in stock. You have to do weird stuff like what I did, what other people do, where we attach basically flipper motors to spinner motors in this weird configuration here. And it does work, it's just a little bit awkward. So here we have Drumblebee. If you guys are wondering, yes, the Robot Arena 2 version is invertible, but he does have a problem though, because when he's flipped over, the drum digs in a little bit into the ground, but not very much. So hopefully that won't be a problem. Actually, I want to see, can I fix that problem? Let's see if the drum's hitting the ground. I might have just fixed that problem actually, because now it should be right in the middle. It's not hitting the ground, so I'm going to say this bot is going to be okay as far as ground clearance goes and as far as getting flipped over. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into a tournament. Let's see... Uh, let's go into this one. I'm scared of... Okay, so you guys know, I don't like the Bridge of Doom Arena at all. And I don't like any of the tabletop arenas besides uh, the Black Vault one. The Black Vault uh, top arena, I absolutely love that one, but I don't like Bridge of Doom Arena, and I don't like most tabletops. So, okay, this is perfect. <laughs> Welcome to the Combat Zone! A cage of steel and polycarbonate. The saws and spikes are especially sharp. We're seeing some interesting robot designs tonight. Oh, you bet this is an interesting robot design announcer because by Robot Arena 2 standards, this is not an easy feat to Time pull to off. Kick this match into making gear. a Robot Arena 2 drum spinner that is actually perfectly invertible and capable of doing some decent damage. Sure, plenty of people have done it, but it takes a little bit of... It takes quite a bit of effort, guys, to do this. So, and as you can see, I'm actually racking up some decent damage. It's a shame that I'm a little bit slow. But I make up for my slowness by <laughs> wheels. <laughs> One of you guys was commenting in the last video and shouting wheels over and over again. And yes, I am more than aware that uh, Coleslaw and the Brain Goat really, really likes wheels in Robot Arena 2. So I suppose you could say I'm going to copy him about that by trying at least to take off all the wheels of a snow job here. But since I'm kind of struggling with that, I'm going to just settle for his frame for right now. This bot has a little problem with the reach of the drum. I'm able to contact, but I'm not able to get good bites, except right there where I took another wheel off. Okay, I, I seriously want those other wheels. This plow is annoying, get it out of my face. The fact that Drumblebee's not the fastest is a little bit of a problem when it comes to maneuvering, but as you guys can see, and as you guys will see by the end of the fight with the point totals, this bot can rack up a lot of damage real fast, even though it's kind of slow. Let's just get over here, get a few more points, do some more damage to his plow there. And see if I can get around to the sun, get the other wheel. I want to take all of Snowjob's wheels off, that would be best case scenario. Don't know why the drum hit the ground just then, that's a little concerning. Hey, Snowjob is now smoking. Why exactly a snow-themed robot is now smoking like he's on fire is a bit ironic, and so is that he no longer has wheels. Wow, you know, you have a four-wheel drive robot, and you manage to lose all four wheels. That is downright embarrassing, Snowjob. You should be ashamed of yourself. Now, one other thing, guys. You guys can't see Snowjob's health right now, but he actually has a huge amount of health left. So I'm not going to be able to destroy him. I'm just going to have to let him get counted out. What I'm trying to say, though, is this drum is really, really good at taking parts off. It's not as good at direct Rematch. chassis damage. Which is going to be a problem for me down the line if I fight certain opponents. Let's just repair some damage here and go into the next fight. Oh no. Oh no. You guys know I hate with a capital H-A-T-E. Little metal friend here. He is the most annoying robot in the... <laughs> he's one of the most annoying robots in the entire game. Especially in cases like this. That was very, very... A, that was a horrible position for me to get stuck in. I need to get around to the side, to the wheels, to the back. There we go. Get around his little front cage he has. Preferably trying to snap off the arms. Again, Drumblebee's not the most maneuverable. He's more of a... Uh, I guess you could say that he's more of a uh, heavy puncher. And he's not very maneuverable, as you can see. Partially because of the wheel position. Similar to the Lego version of it. 
but I am getting some hits off them. I'm just worried about my front motor and also the fact that uh, Little Metal Friend has way more points than me right now, actually. Uh, let's see, let's cause some more damage. That was a piece for me. That's not good. That was one of my stabilizers for my drum. That's really not good. Little Metal Friend is certainly beating me in points right now, and that is really, really bad. I'm just not very maneuverable, and there goes my other stabilizer. That's really, really bad. Okay, there goes his arm. That's good. So now I do have a chance. I'm not as stable or low to the ground as I would like to, but it doesn't matter, because now Little Metal Friend no longer has a way to damage me. So now I should be able to get in, cause some more damage to him. And even without my stabilizers, guys, I can still spin the drum, but it is bouncing occasionally, so it is going to eventually damage itself, and it's a lot harder for me to drive this thing now. But it is certainly working, though. Let's see if we can get it out to the back here. I want to get his wheel off. Once you get one wheel off the two-wheel drive bot, they're effectively dead. Okay, let's just get over here. Come on, little metal friend. Just die already. You are one annoying, annoying robot, and I wish you were never built. But since you are built, let's just uh, calmly try to go over here and rip you apart. As you guys can see, my drum is bouncing on the ground, which is why there were those red numbers there, because the drum is getting damaged. Come on, little metal friend, just die already. How many times have I hit him on the wheels? I feel like I've gotten a lot of direct wheel shots, and nothing's happening. At least if it goes to a decision, I'm going to win, because I have, like, a double the amount of points he has. But still... This is gonna be a tough... <laughs> it's still a tough fight though, because I can't really maneuver properly to Little Metal Friend's sides in order to get a good bite on him. Hey, I am causing some more damage though. I can't get a good shot on the wheels though, and I am, I am hitting the wheels multiple times. I just can't get a good bite on them. And I'm not doing nearly as much damage as I should be doing. Also, oh man, that means that the rest of this tournament is gonna be really, really tough for me. Again, the drums bouncing on the ground is harder to drive. Three, two, one, fight's over. Great match. Okay. Not the worst fight in the world, but my goodness, my fingers are getting tired after that. And the game just crashed. The game just crashed. Oh no, 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 no. Oh, thank goodness. I thought for sure the game just crashed because it hesitated for just a bit too long. Okay, so... Ugh, we have quite a bit of broken pieces we have to deal with. I honestly don't know what to repair first, really. I'll try to... Um, let's see, I have to repair that first so we even have a chance of repairing the others later. Um, I'll repair that. Definitely need to... Oh, I can't even do much repairs, actually. Dang it, little metal friend, you may have ruined my chances of even winning this tournament. Welcome to the combat zone! Oh man, this is a bad fight. Best thing I can do is uh, flip Deadbeat over. Best thing I can do is flip him over. Please flip over, Deadbeat. For goodness sakes, I would appreciate that so much if you would just tip over and just get counted out peacefully so I don't have to... so I can actually get myself nicely repaired, so I don't have to <laughs> continue on the tournament with only one stabilizer arm. Come on, just... Guys, I know it's frowned upon the Robot Arena 2 community, but I think I may just try to pin him against a wall and... Never mind! Oh no. Deadbeat, please! Oh, come on! I wanted him to get stuck upside down, but he wasn't. Okay! <laughs> We're good. <laughs> we are good. Now I can just take some pot shots at him, take a... Wow. Jumblebee took that wheel off real quick once he actually got a good bite. And like I said, guys, this bot's really, really good at taking off, and generally, in taking off wheels or extenders, it's uh, doing significant chassis over. damage that he has a little bit of an issue doing. So I was able to win that fight. Did the game crash again? Hey guys, BattleBots Explained here again, and just as I predicted, there was the game crash. So what we're going to do, guys, is I'm not going back into that tournament because the game is going to crash again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put... I'm going to put Drumblebee brand new into our just standard of combat arena, and I'm going to let him just fight some other heavyweight, uh, you know, just for fun. Just to show that this bot is actually somewhat decent and not absolute garbage. What we're going to do is we're going to put him against Backyard Ripper, since we know that Backyard Ripper 
is actually a spinner that if you let him, he can do some damage over time. So this will be a good way for Drumblebee to prove himself. Drumblebee, don't embarrass me. He already embarrassed me just a little bit. Not too much. Okay, let's just uh, go straight weapon to weapon. Tore off one weapon too, so that's a really good start. These uh, spike strips on Drumblebee's drum do quite a bit of damage and they add up over time quite a bit. And they're overall pretty durable also. Pretty decent weapon teeth for a drum. Some people also, including myself, have used uh, uh, spike strips. Sorry, the iron spikes, they work pretty well too. I am actually doing really, really bad right now in the durability department. My frame is not okay. I'm losing my stabilizers. Backyard Ripper is actually getting around to the sides and not hitting the drum directly. He's hitting the chassis. That's not good. Uh, Drumblebee, you might want to rethink your strategy, buddy. Oh no. No, 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 no. This is... How on earth did he get underneath me? I can't turn around because of how lengthy the bot is. I'm having Bronco Syndrome. Okay, let's get a few more hits onto the disc. Why has that disc not broken already? I have over almost 4,000 points of damage. How has that... No! No! <laughs> Drumblebee, no, don't embarrass me! Drumblebee, you're embarrassing. <laughs> you are seriously embarrassing me. You're just as disappointing as you are in my LEGO series. <laughs> See guys, that's the thing about Drumblebee. It looks really impressive, right? Because it's a big drum, and it looks really intimidating. And then it turns out it's not the best bot in the world because of durability issues, reliability issues, all the issues you can think of. And now poor Drumblebee is knocked down. My goodness, Drumblebee, you are an absolute embarrassment. Oh, that was depressing. So, guys, Drumblebee in Robot Arena 2. It looks good. It does. <laughs> and making a drum spinner work in Robot Arena 2 is pretty good, especially an invertible one like this. But trust me, guys, don't build this bot, or if you do, Find a way to have more wheels here, or something. Or maybe move the motors closer to the center, because as is, this bot is a nightmare to control. <laughs> so that was Drumblebee, he was really, 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 really disappointing. So next up we have Cyclone. Cyclone is a full body spinner I made in Robot Arena 2, kind of similar in shape to something like Mauler. If you guys are wondering the way I made this, and how I have it clipping through all sorts of stuff, is once again I have a flipper motor attached directly to a spinner motor, and I just uh, angled it just the right way. Also, I painted the sides of the shell of the body, so you have green for the front and red for the back. Makes it a little bit easier for me to tell which way I'm going. And I do have these four iron spikes that are orbiting the bot, so hopefully this thing, should, this thing should, in theory, cause quite a bit of damage, because in Robot Arena 2, uh, Iron Spikes generally do quite a bit of damage, and they're also reasonably durable, too. So I'm going to be using this setup, and let's put Cyclone into, say, this tournament, because I think we have... Yeah, we do. I want an enclosed arena. I don't want an arena with pits, because for a full-body spinner, that is a Enter nightmare. The combat zone. Okay, just skip all your lousy intros, announcer. Don't nobody Here needs those. Go. And let's get right up to speed and going up against the Lugnut. I'm a little bit concerned because the Lugnut's pokers are right at the right angle to break off our weapon teeth. But so far, so good though. We're getting a few good hits on Lugnut. Let's see if I can back into him there. That's another thing, guys. When you're driving a full body spinner, don't just uh, try to go forward. Go forward, backwards, sideways, however. Don't think you always have to line up the front with the opponent, because remember, your entire body of the robot is a weapon. So you don't- oh my goodness. <laughs> I just realized because these teeth are angled, it actually gives me another advantage, and that I can kind of- wow! I actually did not think that was going to happen. That kind of gave the spinner a Kronos effect, or kind of a, a Lego version of Kamikaze effect, where it- oh no. And that's how things go wrong, guys, when your weapon teeth start breaking off. I just lost one weapon tooth, which means this bot can't really spin as well as I would have liked it to, as you can see, I'm just wobbling all over the place. And that was only a lug nut I was finding, so that was really, really embarrassing. Okay, our angle connector's bad, but we have to repair 
and reattach that iron spike first. I'm gonna have absolutely no time left to repair. That's bad. Who are we going up against? Oh no. Guys, I'm sorry, Cyclone is dead. <laughs> Let's begin. We're up against Alarm, which not only has a surprisingly durable weapon for Robot Arena 2 standards, but also is essentially a... has wedges on the side, so he's gonna be able to deflect me better. I think I'm gonna lose this fight, guys, or even if I win, I'm gonna be severely damaged. I'm trying to hit on the correct side of the wedge more so I can... Oh my goodness, I actually took the weapon off. That must mean that my weapon is really, really weak, or at least the individual iron spikes are weak. But it doesn't matter for this round because we have knocked him out. Oh my goodness, that was close. Like I said, it was somewhat close because we do have quite a bit of damage to contend with. I can't even repair myself all the way. I can repair myself some. Oh no, I don't want to fight Dementia. So many of these robots are really, really bad for anybody, especially a full body spinner like this, but hopefully I can cause enough damage though to Dementia, hitting him on the correct side of the wedge to... There goes my spinner, <laughs> at least part of it. I need to be careful though not to tip myself over because uh, Cyclone... <coughs> excuse me, Cyclone ain't invertible. So if I get flipped, really really bad news for me. I just have to do as much damage as possible to Dementia and... I'm, I'm kind of spinning the bot up and down, up and down, making sure that I don't go too fast, that I'm going to flip myself over. Okay, let's just spin up, down, see if we can... Okay, Dementia's almost dead, that's good. And Dementia is knocked out. Guys, this bot hits like a truck, but its dur durability is not the best. My goodness, 4,000. <laughs> oh, that, that was pretty good. Okay, I should be able to repair most of my damage. So we are going into the grand final, guys, with uh, pretty much full health. Enter the combat zone. And we're up against Garbage Razor, so... Here we go! You know, Gabe Run Interactive, I appreciate having an easy final and all that, but you gave me tougher opponents earlier on in the tournament, and then for the grand final you give me Razor. I mean, it would be actually kind of intimidating if it was like the Razor from Robot Wars, but no, you get me the absolute garbage Razor here. I mean, what were you thinking? <laughs> did, did you not see the damage that Cyclone was doing previously to the other opponents? Clearly you didn't, and clearly you weren't thinking either, because look at this thing that you designed. Look at Razor. This thing is an absolute joke. I think I've ranted about it in every video so far, but Razor is absolute garbage. Okay, let's just get over here, cause some more damage. Razor's almost knocked out. And Cyclone has won his first championship. That went incredibly well. So guys, Cyclone, or at least this type of full body spinner design in Robot Arena 2, as I said, if you make something similar to this, especially with the iron spikes and these connecting pieces here, it's gonna hit like a truck and cause a lot of damage, but your durability Watch out for that though, you have to drive pretty well though and try to avoid the damaging parts of your opponent's weapon if you can. Of course there are times when you absolutely cannot do that, but if you can though try to and preserve your weapon more. Up next guys, we have the bot that you guys were probably all waiting for, the go-kart. <laughs> I named it Road Rash because I was starving for creativity. Um, this bot has really, really bad battery placement. It's not the best as far as batteries go. We have uh, three RAM plates on the front, and we also have a saw on the back. This bot, um, a lot of people in Robot Arena 2, they make what they call extender bots. What they do is they have a very small and actual body, and then they just use extenders to build an entire frame and stuff. That's what I tried to do. Uh, emphasis on tried with this bot here, actually. I think I'm going to extend it a little bit more and try to uh, make it look a little bit more complete. I don't know how well this is going to work. I may not actually be able to fit it. Yes, I can. I'm making a little bit more of a buggy shape on this. Okay, I need a shorter one for that. There we go. Okay, so now we have a complete dune buggy. Actually, this thing looks a little bit more like a dune buggy than it does... Uh, then does a, a race car, like I said earlier. So, yeah, we have our Dune Buggy here. And I'm, I'm not going to change the name. I was going to change it to Dune Buggy or something like that. I'm going to keep it. So, guys, here we have our Dune Buggy Road Rash. 
I don't think it's going to do that great, but we'll see how it goes. My biggest concerns are we don't have the best weapons or knockout capability. We're made up of extenders, so if we get damaged, it's gonna we'll only be able to repair one extender at a time, so that's really bad. Also, we have all these exposed motors, and this thing's just gonna be a nightmare, <laughs> I know it, but you know what? We're gonna have some fun with it anyway. So let's start out with let's try power up. I hope that this is not gonna be a bad tournament for us. Okay, worst possible tournament, I'm forfeiting that. <laughs> right out the gate. Um, let me think... Oh, okay, fine, I'll go with Black Volt. I was gonna save this for like uh, the simple hammer saw bot since that bot is garbage, but I'll give it to Road Rash though because it'll give him probably the best chance of winning. And of course Road Rash has to begin with the Rumbles. I thought for sure I turned the Rumbles off. I don't know why. It's still active. Welcome to the Claw Top Arena! If the arena's claws don't grab you, the flames are sure to leave their marks. Try and use the flames to your advantage by pushing your opponent into them. The fans love these robots. Well, I don't know how much we love Sentinel exactly, but you know, the fans do like a lot of the robots. That Time is true. To kick this match into gear. Another huge weakness of this bot, guys, is uh, it doesn't exactly have the best pushing power or weaponry, like I was saying, and it's also really, really bad in terms of ground clearance. But actually, the pushing power isn't too bad right now. I'm actually going to start using the saw against uh, against Snowjob here. It's going to be a little bit easier for me to cause damage to him. Uh, this bot looks absurd, as you guys can tell. It looks absolutely absurd. I'm going to be able to push Sentinel off the platform. And no, Snowjob, you are not going to be able to push me off the platform. I am immune to your pushing. Imagine if I could push off the platform right about now. <laughs> How ironic that would be. Let's just go over here, push Bear out of the way. No, 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 you do not, Sentinel. What did I just say? You shall not push me. You shall not push me. I am going to push you. In fact, forget pushing. I'm just going to get over here. Get over here, Sentinel. Let's cause a few uh, more gashes in that armor. I know I already tore you apart earlier on in the episode with, uh, I can't even remember who I beat you up with. It was Drumblebee. Yeah, there we go. Got the tire off, one wheel off, and <laughs> he just took a dive. Over. Okay, so Road Rash has actually won a fight somehow. The go-kart has won a fight. Oh my goodness, look at that damage. Oh man, that is painful. I can repair a good bit of it though, which is not as much as I would like. I still have plenty of extenders that need help, can't fix the saw blade, but we have only one more rumble to win, so let's see how we do in this. Welcome to the Claw Top Arena. And some of the worst possible outcomes, because we have both Backyard let's Ripper, begin. who can do a lot of damage to us, and also Grog, who can hit us from over top, so this is going to be an absolute nightmare. <laughs> It's going to rely entirely on driving ability, which I am clearly displaying now by driving in circles, because that is what a pro does, and I have already lost a huge chunk of myself. That is not how you want to start, losing a huge chunk of yourself, but oh my goodness, I can actually attack it with a saw like this. And come on, I wanted to push Grog off the side, no, 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 no. Oh, I'm stuck. I'm stuck, there we go. Whew. That was a save. That's what you call a save. I almost drove myself out of the arena there. Let's see if I can get the saw in, cause some more damage on the wheel. This is really bad. I hate rumbles, guys. I absolutely hate rumbles. Especially in Robot Arena 2. Come on, I want Backyard Ripper out of the arena so badly. He is a huge threat to me right now. Okay, Backyard Ripper is effectively neutralized because he's just going to drive himself off the edge. Eye Poker is not very much of a threat, but I'm going to put him there anyway. See if I can cause some cuts to Grog there. He's from the prehistoric era, so he probably won't survive a paper cut. They didn't have the good medicine back then. <laughs> there we go. And we have, guys, the go-kart. I don't know what you guys are saying in the chat about this thing. Or in the comments. But the go-kart just won a tournament. <laughs> Guys, I will be perfectly fine if you guys start memeing this go-kart. Because this thing is absolutely hilarious. In fact, I may do one more fight with him later on in the episode to finish things off. So, Road Rash, the go-kart, has won a tournament. 
That is awesome. Up next, guys, we have something that was a good idea from one of you guys that just wasn't didn't turn out very awesome at all. We have the simple hammer saw bot, which I did decide to add a little plow on the front to aid him in defense a little bit. The problem is, guys, the way the Robot Arena 2 works, at least the stock Robot Arena 2, the actuators and the motors aren't very powerful as far as lifting. So, for example, here, I have the higher power servo motor, and this thing refuses, absolutely refuses, to lift this thing properly at, at any, with any sort of pace whatsoever. So while it can work, I basically have to keep the hammer saw at this angle in order, and just let it sit there in order to hit opponents. Because when I try to move it back, I'm trying to move it this way, backward, and it's just flopping downward. It's, it's just such a sad sight. So... This spot's going to be a nightmare to try to win a fight with, but you know what? I'm going to try to win a fight with it anyway, and I'm going to give it the best possible chance by... Okay, first, give me just one second, guys. There we go. I noticed that the volume shifted just then. I made sure that there are going to be no rumbles, because this spot will not survive a rumble. Oh no, not the bridge arena. <laughs> you guys know how much I despise this arena. Fine, I'll do it <laughs> for you guys. Welcome to the Bridge of Doom! The fans are ready for some action tonight. Watch out for the flames. You might find yourself a bit hot under the collar. The fans love these robots. Do they seriously, though? I mean, look at this. I'm up against Big Dong. Does anybody like Big Dong? Let's I don't begin. think so. And if you say you do, chances are you're probably not telling the truth. Because look at this thing. It's own oh my goodness. I am an absolute embarrassment. <laughs> I effectively KO'd myself. <laughs> or at least I would have if this bot wasn't invertible. But thankfully I am invertible, so it's not a big deal. Actually, this bot's actually quite more effective with the saw like this, to be honest. Oh man, this is... this did not go according to plan whatsoever. Hey, I can still bring the saw down over him, though. Can't really do much to him, though. Yes, crowd, I know this is a boring as all get out fight, but you know what, though? It's not too bad. Give me a break. Also, it seems like every episode I do of Robot Arena 2, you've got at least one fight, and at least one fight that is just sad compared to the rest. And it usually happens with a bot like this. And Big Dog has just uh, taken himself out. Oh, come on, Big Dog, no, don't move, don't move, don't move, don't move, don't move, don't move. Please, Big Dog, just stay there just long the enough. Thank you over. so very much, Big Dog. You have saved us an entire minute, 50 seconds of our lives. Did the game- Hi guys, well that is the second game crash this recording session. I gotta say this is probably the worst luck I've had with this game lately in terms of game crashes. So once again, we're just gonna go straight into just a regular fight with a simple hammer saw bot. Honestly guys, I'm just gonna do one more fight with this thing because believe me, this thing is a nightmare to control. I would not recommend you guys under any circumstances try to make this thing the way I did it in Stock Robot Arena 2. If you try to make it in DSL or something, or in Component Freedom, go for it. I did with my old Saw Blaze, that thing was awesome. This thing, and also the recent not Saw Blaze I made, because this is Stock Robot Arena 2 though, it is just embarrassing. I mean, just look at this song. I can barely- <laughs> What on earth just happened? Um, we are stuck. There we go. There we go, it's a little bit better now. So as I was saying guys, don't make a bot like this in Robot Arena 2 if you actually want to have fun. You need component freedom, you need DSL in order to make something like this work properly. Sure, you can make it work, but do you really want to sit here for the full three minutes and just do this? For three solid minutes? Actually, he's causing quite a bit of damage actually. You know what, I kind of take it back. Simple hammer saw bot, you're not so bad. Even though the crowd is booing me right now. Still, this bot isn't the worst 
of all time because you have moments like that. And moments like this where you can cause quite a bit of damage, but getting to those moments though, goodness gracious is that is that does that take a while? <laughs> okay, Sentinel, can you just die, please? I've been I've been hitting you so much and I've got I'm getting close to 5,000 points at this point. It'll show after with the total. Yep, it's over 5,000 now. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious, Sentinel, just dive, please. <laughs> this is... <laughs> Sentinel, this is taking too long. How on earth is Sentinel still here? I mean, this is actually absurd. I'm just gonna ram into him as hard as I can, see if I can... No, I'm gonna use a ram plate. Maybe the ram plate will knock him out. There we go. Yes, the ram plate has given us hope. Woo! You know, guys, I really need to make a robot made exclusively out of RAM plates and see how that goes. I'm sorry. Okay, we have one more bot. We have Fake Tombstone, which, as you guys saw in the beginning, I just... I did some horrible things to you by adding these gigantically, cartoonishly huge wheels to a perfectly reasonable tombstone. But you know what, though? We're just going to ignore that detail entirely, and we're going to go into another tournament. Now, we're just going to forfeit this thing, because we know that the game's going to crash on us. And let's see, let's go into, well, one of the only tournaments remaining. Let's see how this goes. Welcome to the Hammer Arena! We've got a great match coming your way this evening! Watch out, or the giant hammer in this arena will come down on you like a giant hammer! I've never felt such a cold chill as I've felt between the opposing bots this evening. You know, for once you're actually accurate about that, because I do not like a Bushido here. He's one of my least favorite middleweights. In fact, I don't like most of the middleweights the in Robot Arena 2, at least the stock version. I do not like the middleweights at all. They are the hardest, easily, the hardest weight class to fight in, in Robot Arena 2, to fight against. Especially when when you're when you're fighting Bushido and you have a bot, excuse me, when you have a bot with an exposed motor, like fake Tombstone here. But at least I got a wheel though. That's good. So Bushido is now he has a limited movement, certainly not disabled because he's still chasing after uh, fake Tombstone here. I want to see if I can get that other wheel. I desperately need that other wheel. Bushido, give me that other wheel. <laughs> he has too many wheels on him. I need to reduce his mobility substantially in order to have a fighting chance. Did Bushido just give up on life? No, he's still alive. Dang it. Let's, okay, let's take that other wheel off. Take another wheel off. Okay, we have almost... We have almost uh, Minotaur versus Bronco to him at this point. He's only got one wheel left. Come on, just get that last wheel, please. For goodness sakes, take that last wheel off. I am paranoid right now about losing my motor, though, because if he gets one hit on my motor, he can completely tear it off, and then my entire tournament run will be over. Come on, just a few more hits. I've got to knock him out, or I let him get counted out something. How on earth is Bushido still moving at this point? Um, am I smoking? I'm smoking. I need to get that last wheel very, very badly, so I can just let him get counted out, because my motor's smoking, and I am... Bushido, get counted out, please, get counted out. Bushido, get counted out already, my goodness! Just, Bushido, accept your fate like an honorable warrior you are, and just go! Finally! My goodness, Bushido, you took so long! Okay, well, now that we've actually taken care of him, We'll do our Ray Billing Spin Maneuver Dance. Yay, he's getting counted out. Great match. I'll just throw his wheel around just for fun. <laughs> okay, game don't crash on me. Okay? Okay, that motor took a lot of damage and my wheel is even worse. That's bad. I did not actually realize that. Oh boy, hopefully that's not going to come back to bite me that I did not repair. The wheel. I could have only repaired one of them anyway. Oh no. Now I'm up against Sabertooth, which is definitely going to grab onto one of my wheels. I really should have figured out which wheel was weaker now that I think about it. That was a big mistake. Okay, Sabertooth, I've got to get around to the side, get around to his wheel. Only way I'm going to take him out is get around to the side here, because if he grabs onto me with those things of his, with those uh, 
hugging arm, as you could say. I am very much done. So I need him to come over here. That's it, that's it. No, no. Ray Billings maneuver. There we go. One arm down. One arm down. Two wheels to go. And one arm left also. There goes one wheel. Okay, Sabretooth is effectively dead now, but I don't think he's going to stop moving until I get that other wheel. Okay, that was a direct shot on the wheel, and it's good. We're making good progress. Another direct shot on the wheel. It's just come on. Just there we go. Fake Tombstone has beaten Sabretooth, even though I have one of my wheels is literally about to come off. <laughs> like it is hanging on by a thread. It is hanging on so by so little that it's like when Tombstone fought Scorpios, and Scorpios' this wheel was uh about to come off. It is really, really bad. So let's uh, go in and immediately fix that wheel. I think it was this wheel. I'm not sure which one. Doesn't matter. And let's see, which one do we need? Do I need more? Okay, that axe is a little bit loose. Um, okay, I'll go with the axe. Taking a little bit of a gamble there, repairing the axe instead of the extender. Welcome to the okay, time for us to fight Dementia again. I think I beat him before with a horizontal spinner previously. Yeah, I did. I used Cyclone. Okay, let's just get Dementia over. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, you know, Dementia, I get why Gabriel Interactive and Infobrains named you what they did. Because look at that! Dementia actually took itself out. You know what guys, after I complete this, this tournament, I'm going to go into the main arena and I'm going to have some exhibition matches. Fake Tombstone is going to fight uh, Dementia for real. After I complete the tournament, of course. Enter the okay, this is going to be a good one. This is almost like Tombstone vs. Nightmare, Let's because begin. the Rip Blade kind of seems like the Robot Arena 2 version of Nightmare, wouldn't you agree? And, uh, he's already made a huge mistake. Okay, you're coming into a fight against what's effectively Tombstone, and our weapons are locked together, that's not good. He's going into a fight against what's effectively Tombstone, and he immediately handicapped himself further. That is not what you want to do, man. Huge, huge mistake. Okay, let's see if we can cause more damage to him. My blade is a little bit too low to be doing substantial damage, except for that hit. And that hit. <laughs> Never mind. I can't really get a good weapon-to-weapon -weapon hit, though. He's going to be hitting the top of my blade, but it doesn't matter. Now let's just uh, go full ham on him, take off the wheels, take off the weapon supports, go for the weapon supports again, and also the wheels in the frame. There goes a chunk of him. This is turning into a textbook Ray Billings fight. Except BattleBots explains controlling a cartoonishly uh, deformed version of Tombstone instead of the actual proper Tombstone. But, you know, guys, I know that Ray Billings typically doesn't let anybody touch or drive Tombstone. This match is done. I know that a couple times his son drove it, but for the most part, though, Ray Billings controls Tombstone himself. I think if. He gave uh, somebody else the controls who actually knew what they were doing. I think it wouldn't be that big of a gamble, really. Especially since Ray occasionally makes mistakes and is a little bit too arrogant with his driving, but for the most part, though, he is the best person to drive Tombstone. And besides, this is just a cheap knockoff, cartoonishly uh, messed up looking version of Tombstone. I mean, it's like the Disney version of Tombstone. So guys, as I said, uh, Fake Tombstone has now won a tournament, but we're not done with him quite yet, because we are going to go into a few exhibition matches, just for fun. First, we're going to have Fake Tombstone versus Dementia. As I just said, Dementia, guys, he really did not get a fair fight there, because Dementia instantly killed himself. So this is going to be a real fight. No hills, no slopes, just straight up classic combat between fake tombstone and really, really stupid bot. Really damaged bot. Dementia is not okay. And you know, so far, so good. Ray Billings maneuver coming very much in handy. Big mistake by Dementia there, exposing the rear end. Dementia, the tombstone maneuver typically only works with tombstone or horizontal. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> I did the Tombstone Gyro Dance. 
I guess this mine is somewhat accurate, even though it's hideously deformed in comparison to the real tombstone. Got a wheel there, did some more hits on the wrong side of the wedge. I, I, guys, I know that I bore you guys to death with, to death with it, but seriously. Right side of the red wedge, wrong side of the wedge, big difference. There's a difference between you killing a horizontal spinner with the wedge and losing all of your wheels. Like, Dementia is going to lose all of his wheels if I don't knock him out first. Pretty sure I'm gonna knock him out first. There we go. So, either way, fake tombstone beats Dementia. Stupid driving or not. So, I don't know why, guys, but I genuinely want to see what happens. If we have fake tombstone here versus backslash. Why specifically? Well, because it's about as close as we're ever going to get to Tombstone versus uh, versus Lucky and or Biohazard. I've always wanted that fight to happen. Tombstone versus Lucky, or if we can try time travel, older version of Tombstone versus Biohazard. I don't think Biohazard would be able to hold up considering that Megabyte and also Brutality just tore it to pieces. But I think though, if Lucky, if Team Lucky put on their strongest wedge like they did against Gigabyte. And if they had a good driver, like if they had Paul Vincent Millia drive it, they would have a chance, I think. Not a good chance, by by any means, but, you know, a chance to maybe do something to Tombstone, and now I am inverted. Thankfully, the spot is perfectly invertible, and the blade is now higher, which means I'm not hitting the wedge anymore. I'm kind of hitting the top of, uh, of Backslash now. You can also see the hideous way that I have built this spot with all the weird angles and glitches there. I am so sorry you guys have to see this. Okay, it would actually be best, really, if I can get flipped back over because I'm no longer properly getting a good uh, angle and hitting a uh, backslash because my blade is so high. Let's see, let's get a few more hits to the top and your backslash is knocked out. Tombstone, fake tombstone, Disney version tombstone has beaten backslash. So that was pretty fun, guys. We're going to end with Tombstone there, and we're going to do our last fight, which is going to be Road Rash versus something. Now, let me think. What is the best possible robot for something as stupidly absurd as Road Rash to fight? I'm going to go with Mud Runner, because Mud Runner is a really, really stupid design for a robot. Enter the combat zone. And I genuinely think this is going to be an interesting fight. Now, am I going to win this? I don't really think so. I'm going to be faster than him. And I do have the saw to cause damage, but I'm really, really exposed, though, as far as my extenders and stuff. So that way, this is a really bad fight. Though. At the same time, though, if I can get the saw in play, like there, I can attack the motors directly, and I should be able to cause some substantial damage to his undercarriage here because Mudrunner has some of the worst, highest ground clearance in robot combat history, I would say. Next is something like Huge, and of course, you know, with Huge, ground clearance doesn't actually matter because of the way the bot's built. But as for Mudrunner, it's gonna matter a heck of a lot, <laughs> because he is totally vulnerable to a saw getting underneath it, or in this case, in a literal go-kart that is going around pushing him and doing things like that. So guys, Road Rash, the go-kart, he has won a tournament, and he's also beaten Mudrunner. Not that that's a very high bar to clear, but you know, it's fun. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode. This is, uh, we had quite a few glitches, we had some funny moments, we had some good bots, some bad bots, some demonstrations, it was fun. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and guys, please comment below or type in the live chat what other types of designs or robots you would like for me to attempt, because Building robots without component freedom in Robot Arena 2 is certainly challenging, and bots you would think would be easy are actually a lot harder than you would think to make without something like component freedom or DSL. So guys, please comment below what types of robot designs or robots you would like for me to try to attempt, and I'll do my best to see if I can make them. Not a guarantee, but I will try. Guys, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys uh, next time.